few it's weeks ago, I was in Central it. Florida, and I got stuck in traffic in the dark in a storm mm. Jesus. in Orlando wow. on the interstate. Mm. Wow. Bumper to bumper. Six-hour trip turned in almost eight-hour trip. Wow. That scripture was hitting me again. Oh, and the day before I was to go, the pastor called, and some people was talking because they was tracking that hurricane. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. They said, people were talking about it need to cancel because it's going to get bad. Mm -hmm. I said, really? Mm -hmm. I said, don't you know three weeks ago when the Holy Ghost gave us the dates to do this revival? That's right. He knew. About that storm. Right. Right. Storm ain't took him off guard. I said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do because they asked me, they're going to leave it up to me. What you want to do? I said, I'm going to trust the Savior and I'm not going to track the storm. I'm coming. Boy, I got stuck in that traffic and it was storming. The devil said, boy, you miss God now, boy, boy, you miss God now. I said, no, I ain't miss God. I'm about to see God. Because everywhere I read in Scripture, the disciples saw him doing things they'd never seen him do. Where was it at? In storms? Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. And, and in hard places. Oh, it's in valleys of shadows of death. But they was, whoop, he's there. Lord, I got, whoop, there he is. Whoop. Somebody said, Jesus, son. Ah, there he is. My God, I ain't never seen you like that, Lord. Ah, somebody ought to praise him for the valley. Somebody ought to praise him for the hindrance. Somebody ought to praise that you are delayed. Jesus, if you had a been here, my brother, wasn't his eye. That's what Martha said. But Jesus and John left. Huh? If you'd have just been here. And Jesus doesn't say it in Hebrews, or not Hebrews, thank you for Hebrews. Praise God. Amen. Wife, well, tell your husband that in the morning when it's time to make the coffee. See, it's in the Bible, Hebrews. You go to it. <laughs> Bless God. Might as well make something out of it. I don't know why I said Hebrews. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> oh, well. But in John 11, Praise God. Amen. In verse 15, Jesus told his disciples, He said, I'm glad for your sakes. That I didn't go to Lazarus when he was just sick. Uh -huh. To the intent. Somebody say to the intent. Yeah. That you might believe. God's got an intention in his delay. He's got an intention that's divine in your way. Isaiah 30 verse 18. The Lord says I will wait that I might show myself gracious. Gracious means that I might exceed what you've seen me do. Before. That's right. That's right. Anytime God gets ready to do something you ain't never seen Him do, He'll make you wait. That's right. Amen. He'll allow divine delays. That's right. Come on, somebody. That's right. In John 11 and verses 4, news got to Jesus. Lazarus is sick. He's at the point of death. They're sending word to you to come. And Jesus turns around and said, The sickness ain't unto death, but it's for the glory of God. Come on. Wow. That's right. That's right. Somebody say, Boy, Jesus missed it, didn't he? Because Lazarus died. No, Jesus waited four days on purpose. He waited not only for him to die, but he said, I want his flesh to be so rotten. That's right, come on. When I get there. That's right. That's right. Because all these people's ever seen me do is heal sick bodies. Come on. But I want that body so dead and rotten, I'm about to show them a part of me they didn't know I had. That I am. I'm about to let them know I don't just heal sick bodies. I can take dead, decaying, rotten bodies and restore them just with my word and call them out the grave because I'm God Almighty. They think I'm just a prophet that can come along with an anointing to heal. But I'm about to show them I'm God Almighty. Somebody shout anytime God allows your trouble to rot to make you wait when he allows things to be delayed over it's because he said I'm about to show you how much of God I really am he said I'm going to increase myself and my power towards you that's why I wait so I can be gracious unto you Isaiah 30 verse 18 Psalms 30 verses 7 David said God Jesus. makes my mountain to stand strong. Yes. Sometimes God on purpose, though you're quoting from Matthew 11, 22, Jesus answered and had faith in God, and this is the kind of faith he said to have, and he gives us the teaching on it. 
kind of faith he's talking about to have. He said in verses 23, he said, If you have the faith of a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, Be removed and cast into the sea. And if you doubt not those things which you say with your mouth, you will have whatever you say. Hello? He was talking about a talking faith, a faith that knows, that don't just look at the mountain and say, Y'all see my mountain? It's a big old mountain, tall mountain, wide mountain, been a long time mountain. Look at your neighbor and say, God ain't called you to talk about it. He called you to talk to it. That's right. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, quit trying to climb them things. You're supposed to talk to them. Somebody shout, if anybody's leaving, it'll be the mountain. Come on, God ain't, I don't really know where he called us to climb them. He said, speak to them. Come on. But what do you do when you speak to them and they stand strong? Let me read this again and let me quote it again because Psalms 30 verse 7 he said, By my favor I make the mountain to stand strong. Make, make my mountain to stand strong. Sometimes God's favor is to allow the mountain to stay there. Come on. Because mm. in Exodus 3 verses 1, Moses went through the backside of a desert until he got to the mountain of God where he saw God and God revealed himself in a burning bush. Somebody say on the backside of a desert. In the middle of a mountain is where God come down like fire and put power on one man and delivered a whole nation out of bondage of 450 years. Somebody shouts, you can't bypass it. There ain't no markdowns. There's no blue light specials. Come on, somebody. There ain't no little yellow Walmart smiley face, amen, and prices falling. Come on, hallelujah. The price is going to cost you everything to walk into the power of God for God to use you to set captives free. Look at your neighbor and say, Whatever you do, endure as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Come on. Hallelujah. That's 2 Timothy 2 and verses 3 declares. Amen. Hold on to him in the middle of it. Don't stop moving forward. Amen. Trust God. Walk with God because God said, I'll prepare the table. Yes. Amen. And I won't remove enemies before I prepare the table. I won't. Tell the mountain get out of the way before I prepare the table. Matter of fact, it's the mountain and it's the enemies. Come on, somebody, because anywhere there's a valley, there's got to be mountains on either side of the hill, church. God said, I'll just invite them all. The mountains, the valleys, the shadow of death, all your enemies. I'll just let them sit down out there in the audience and I'll set a table up right here. Leave the mountains all around you. Leave the problems all there. Come on, somebody. Let things even get stinking worse. Come on, Jesus. And God said, right in the middle of all the stink, I'll perfume your problem. I'll bless you. Come on, somebody. Somebody shout before blessings. Often comes messings. Somebody say, Ew. Hallelujah. If you ain't never experienced life as Ew, just keep breathing. You're going to experience puberty after a while. Sometimes life gets messy. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. But let me tell you, somebody told me one day, said, Man, what a message. I said, Yeah, mess with age. That's all a message is. Mess with age. Praise God. When you walk through a mess, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. Season after season, and you go through one thing after another, but you hold on to God. Amen. And you keep praying. You yes. keep seeking God. Amen. You keep moving forward after a while. God will turn that mess into a message. Uh, come on, somebody. And it ain't nothing but a mess with age. Uh, and you see somebody walking with the power of God in the He got something to say. Amen. Glory to God. And God saying it through them. Uh, it's because they've been through something and they hold on. Uh, God looked guilty. Amen. Job said it like this in Job 13 and 15. Though he slain me, yet will I trust him and maintain my own ways before him. Uh, even though it appears God's guilty. God looks like he's the one at fault, allowing this mountain to stay, this enemy to stay, but it's time to get our eyes off of the enemies that's been around so long. It's time to get our eyes off of the peaks of the mountains that's been in our way so long, and it's time to look around in this valley and say, I've missed something in this valley. I missed him. He's been here the whole time, and I see him preparing a table. God's about to bless me. My cup's about to overrun. My hand's about to be anointed with all. And he said in verse 6, Psalm 23, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I'll dwell in the house of the Lord. Here's the last word of Psalm 23, the entirety of chapter 1 through 6. I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That don't sound like nobody quitting to it. That don't sound like nobody stopping it. 2 Samuel 23, there was a man called Isliasar. Hmm. His Liz are. I think his father was. That was Dino. I don't know. 
I think it says liaison. Yeah. Anyhow, he's the son of Dodo. How would you like your father to be named Dodo? What's your daddy's name, Dodo? <laughs> now we could pronounce it the other way to make a point, and we will. I think I will. Do do. You ever feel like the son of Dudu? Somebody's thinking, boy, I missed the wrong turn somewhere tonight. I know I was enjoying it until now. Somebody said, eh. Somebody say, stinking. Lazarus' tomb got to stinking. Matter of fact, Martha said, don't even roll the stone away. Jesus was telling them, she said, no, Lord, by this time he's stinking. And Jesus told him in John 11 and 40, he said, didn't I tell you if you believe me, you'd see my glory? Because death ain't nothing but sleep to Jesus. And Jesus told him he ain't going to die. The sickness is for the glory of God, but he did die. But what Jesus was letting them know, death ain't nothing but sleep to me. I'm fit to wake the boy up. I want to show you I can do more than heal bodies. I can take a situation that is dead and decaying and restore it in a moment. Yes. Lazarus' tomb looked too late. You're going to have those experiences where it is stinking. It is rotten. It is decaying. It looks too late for even God. But when it's late for God, it's right on time for the God we serve. Come on. He on purpose delays that he might display so he can show something of himself that you've never witnessed. But he's got to have your cooperation. Amen. Come on. Amen. He's got to have your involvement. Stay with me, he said. Don't quit. Don't stop. When I don't make no sense, hold on. Keep moving forward with me. Come on, somebody. Because when you do, you'll watch me spread a table. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, you're almost to a table. Almost to a table. table. Mm -hmm. Somebody's thinking, well, I ought to be seeing the table uh, after the enemies is gone and after the mountains have been moved. No, God, don't. he does it right in the middle of it all. David said in Psalms chapter 138 and verse 7, he said, though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me and stretch forth your hand against the wrath of my enemies. David said, I'm walking. Somebody said, walking right in the middle of a mess. It stinks. It's nasty. Come on, somebody. Anybody ever experienced the nasty now? Oh, yeah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. And it's just stinking. It's filthy. It's the worst time of my life. But the worst time of my life is really, amen, glory to God, nothing but, uh, amen, the best time because it's God saying, I'm about to do something. I'm preparing you. Look at your neighbor and say, all the stuff you've been going through, it's been nothing but a rehearsal for the recital that's about to take place. Your past ain't nothing but rehearsal. Amen. Everything you've ever went through ain't nothing but rehearsal for what God says I'm about to allow you to do. And it may look too late right before God shows up and says, here it is, watch what I'll do. Somebody shout, it always looks too late. Right before he prepares the table. Right before he rolls the stone away. Right before he calls something dead back to life. Yes. He always looks too late. Yes. In Amos chapter 3 verses 11, one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible, Amos prophesied and said, Thus saith the Lord, amen, glory to God, even as a shepherd takes out of the mouth of a lion two legs and a piece of an ear, so shall he take the children of Israel out that dwell on the corner of a bed, amen, and in a couch. In other words, they were laid down. The bed's a picture of somebody just saying, I quit. The couch is just a portrait of saying, well, I'm just quitting. I'm just, I give up. I just sit down. I just lay down. And God says why because the portrait shows us a lion and he's chewing on a lamb and all that's left of this lamb is two legs and a piece of an ear and God says the shepherds of the flesh may walk up and say it's too late the portrait painted here in this scripture could have had a title it's too late but when the master walked up when the good shepherd who John 11 and 10 or John 10 and 11 says lays down his life for his sheep when he walks up he said, if I can find just two legs and just a piece of an ear, I can take what the lion has devoured, put it out of his mouth, and restore it. Don't you know if all that's left of a lamb is two legs and just a piece of the lamb's ear? Most folks would say, too late for them. Come on, come on. Too late. Jesus loves to hear it's too late. Come on. Sometimes he waits till he hears that. That's it. Amen. Too late. Mm. Jesus hears in the earth, too late. He looks over at angels and say, Ha! It's our time. Come on. <laughs> come on. When flesh says, can't a thing we can do. Too late. 
Do you say, okay? It's our time. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Two legs. Piece of an ear. Not a whole ear, just a piece. Just the smallest hearing of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word, Word of God. Amen. Almost in simply. Look at your neighbor and say, if you can't hear God, read God. Amen. Amen. If you can know the Word, the Word is with God, the Word was God. John 1. That's it. Amen. Revelation 19 and 13, we clothed with the best certificate of blood. His name is called the Word of God. God said, if you can stand, that's what the two feet represent. If you can stand with just the smallest of faith on what you've heard me say. Amen. I can redeem anything. Amen. It may look so late that man and every other shepherd has gave up. But God said, if I can find somebody that will stand on what I would say and believe it, God said, I can redeem. Amen. Humpty Dumpty, he sat on the wall and Humpty Dumpty had himself a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men could put old poor Humpty Dumpty back together again. Well, that's a fairy tale, but here's the faith the truth. The king can. There's still a king. He's a king of kings. He's a lord of lords. His name is Jesus the living Christ. And if you'll hang with him, somebody shout you hang with him. If you stay with him, if you keep moving with him, you keep walking with him, you keep moving forward, friend, he'll redeem any moment. It ain't too late for your healing. It ain't too late for your miracle. It ain't too late to see God rescue your house because he said if you'll believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll be saved. You and your house. Acts 1631. Y'all ain't leaving me now, are you? I ain't worrying you out, any. Y'all came for preaching. I hope you did because y'all welcome to preach it here tonight. That's all I know to do to preach. Come on, somebody. Somebody shout. It'll be worth the wait. 